Scotty, what's up, buddy? What's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, pretty good. You know, I was thinking about because, and I'll talk to you in a minute about, you know, you're about to have a baby. But what if that baby comes out and you're in the room and it cries like this? <laughs> <laughs> uh I think that would scare everybody in there. That'd be hilarious. Like, it comes out with his voice already. <laughs> yeah. They're like, something's wrong. Uh, like, no, that's just how it cries, man. I don't know. Uh, good to talk to you, Scotty. How's everything been? It's great, man. It's great. It's been an uh, exciting few weeks for us, so we're, uh, we're flying high. Yeah, and let's get back to that baby in a second. Uh, question for you. Do you and your wife, Gabi, do you guys have a song? Like, when you think about, you know, being a couple, do you have a single song that's like, that's our song? Do we have a single song? Yeah. Uh, I mean, in my mind, like our first dance with Elvis, Can't Help Fall in Love, that would be my pick. Well, um, what would she say, though? She'd probably pick like a Chesney song or something. So you don't have a single song that you're like, this is our song. You each have your own version of that. Probably. I'm not sure if we, we like played the, the couples game that we would pick the same song. I don't think so. Have you seen the Elvis movie? I know you're at least you were a big Elvis guy. Dude, I just watched it last night. It was incredible. Now, they were telling me it's shot kind of funny, it, not a straight biopic. What? Give me your review of the Elvis movie and why it was a little different. See, I don't think you can shoot, if you really want to do Elvis, I don't think it can be just so straightforward, like a, like a walk the line or something. I mean, Elvis was, in my mind, one of the most unique characters to ever come through planet Earth. So I think, uh, I think they did a great job. I think Austin Butler came about as close as you can to really portraying Elvis. I was, be, she said she just looked over at me the whole time, and uh, I just had this grin on my face uh, the whole movie. So it was, I thought it was awesome. If you were to Mount Rushmore Elvis songs, meaning you got four, you're going to carve them in stone, they're going to be there forever, what are the four Scotty McCurry favorite Elvis songs? Uh, well, great question. I think you have to start with That's All Right, Mama, kind of the one that got him going. Uh Suspicious Minds, got to be up there. Uh, Blue Suede Shoes. Probably probably Hound Dog. I mean, there's so many. But yeah, you, you those really, are the first ones. That's a mind. terrible, terrible four. Because you <laughs> totally forgot terrible. about, yeah, terrible four. I've heard way better. You're like Teddy Bear. Oh, let me be. Ba, ba, ba. Yo, Teddy Bear. Ba, ba, ba. Come on. That's prime Elvis. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if you just ask the random guy on the street, Teddy Bear would be in their top four. But I like it. I like it. Yeah, I'm done with this interview. <laughs> I, I, have, I, have, up on. I have no more space for this guy. Uh, Scotty McCreary <laughs> is on with us. Hey, did you know? And you probably don't, but I will not say the name of your song. I did hear that. No, yeah. I did. I, I listened to y'all's show. Protest. But, uh, Protest. I appreciate. Uh, I understand. I appreciate Amy giving the love. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> That's true. So I, even when we do the countdown, you know, and I used to say a lot of curse words or bad words, and people don't. Some people don't even consider it a bad word. But I, when I write and when I do comedy, I don't want to think bad words, so I just don't say them. Not because I think I'm better than them, so I don't say it, and it's weird for me. And I'll go, all right, here we go to number sixteen on the countdown, and Amy will go, damn straight. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, it, I love it. It sounds better when Abby says it anyway. But no, I get it. I even try to, uh, for me, I try to really be clean as far as the curse words until I get on the golf course. And then I just really can't help myself. But uh, other than that, I'm right there with you. Is there any way, and I'm going to ask a big favor, I didn't think about this until now. Is there any way next time you're playing guitar, you know, and there's a microphone around, maybe you cut me a version of Dang Straight. Dang straight. Dang. I'm in the straight. studio right now, so yeah. I, can, I can catch you that real quick. <laughs> See? <laughs> Just a little something we could play. <laughs> like, I'll be like, all right, guys, you know me. I want to hear a little version of Dang Straight from Scotty McCreary. And then people be like, what the heck is this? I think Dang <laughs> Straight's out. Yeah, play that on Disney Radio, too. It's like there's explicit and then clean. Explicit's hilarious. The Scotty McCreary explicit <laughs> song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Scotty McCreary is on yeah. with us. And I'm going to play the song in a second because it's massive and, you know, it's probably going to be your... Fifth, number one, I think. Uh, so we're going to get to that. But it brings me to a point, an awkward conversation. And I like Scotty a lot. Like if I see Scotty out, love to have a good conversation with Scotty outside of work. And we were in Austin and it was me and Scotty and Thomas Rhett. And we're talking about golf. And, you know, sometimes I don't fit in the group. I'm just standing there and we're all talking a little bit. And Scotty and TR is talking. They're like, hey, Scotty's like, you ever come to North Carolina? TR, why don't you come up? I'll, I'll take you over the course. You're touring through. And I was like, you know, I'm just kind of waiting. I'm like, well, I try. I tore a lot. And, 
and I'm just sitting, I'm waiting. I'm like, yeah, I like golf and uh, nothing. And Scotty's like, all right, I guess we got to go. I, I He invited TR five Man. feet from me, and Scotty never said, hey, Bobby, if you come through North Carolina, I'll take you to my club or course. Right in front of my face, he didn't invite me. Oh, man. You, I, I had no idea I made you feel that way, Bobby, but I, I do apologize. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you remember that conversation? I, I was mainly thinking, like, the sheds and stuff, like the amphitheaters that, that TR is playing. It's, it's really close to where I play golf. But, do, you, do you remember that conversation? Bobby, you're always welcome. Yes or no, do you remember the conversation, Scotty McCurry? Yes or no what? you remember that conversation? Oh, I do. It was right before we all kind of went on stage and we were taking that picture. Mm-hmm. Do you see how sad um, my face was? Yeah. Think, think back. you see how sad my face was not being invited, feeling like junior high again? <laughs> Not at all, man. That is, uh, <laughs> I didn't even think of that. I, I apologize, Bobby. That's, that's all, right. all on me. You're your, more than welcome. Man. I don't even no. want your pity. In, you're more than welcome. That's what you say to people <laughs> when they've pitied you. Uh, whenever you play your set, what song do they sing back the loudest? Ooh, um, I mean, Damn Straight is definitely leading the pack with that right now just because it's fresh. But I think my favorite one is uh, when we do This Is It and I kind of let them take the bridge. And uh, it's always very loud and very special, especially when Gabi's out there. Very yeah, that's special. a good one. Uh, what's the bridge? Like, what's of this is it? Give me the first couple words. Let me see if I know it. It's like the now you're walking down the aisle, I can't help but smile. And then it goes into the, the part that they really take is when I go back into it and say, take my hand. And then uh, you go into the last chorus from there. But that's a good always one. a cool part of the show. Whenever you write a, a song or you start to sing a song that, that you're – you record and it does touch an emotional place especially early when you do it do you ever get emotional the first couple times you have to play something new that when you wrote it was an emotional thing oh man i mean i still get emotional with five more minutes and i wrote that song seven years ago like uh a few nights ago we were playing a show with brooks and dunn in west virginia and my granddaddy who i wrote the song for is from west virginia and the whole time I'm singing it, I'm thinking, man, Granddaddy would totally be here right now wearing his Mountaineer sweatshirt. like. And so I just kind of get lost in the lights up above, and it kind of got me. So, uh, yeah, I get I get probably emotional all the time. I bet you that song could make you emotional for a lot of different reasons because that song kind of covers a lot of a lot of emotional ground, like different subjects. So I could definitely see where if you're in a place that your grandfather would love and you're singing that fight, you know, in the song – you know, alludes to that. I, I, I can see where you'd get emotional at that. You ever gotten so emotional you have to stop? Yeah, for sure. Um, with that song a few different times, because, uh, again, it, it doesn't hit you every night. Every night you know it's special, and, and you can look out in the crowd, and there's somebody, you know, tearing up, and that, uh, that song means a lot to them. But for me, it's uh, whether it's Granddaddy or when I've lost a couple buddies from high school, and, and you know, that song just kind of, Takes me back to memories with him, and I'm thinking of good times. You know, I'm missing them, but I think when I'm singing it, I'm, I'm reminiscing on the good times, and that's kind of what gets me. Scotty McCurry announced pretty recently that they're going to have a baby. It's the the first baby. And what was that conversation with your wife on when you tell the public and how you tell the public? What was that like? Yeah, you know, luckily me and Gabi are normally pretty on the same page when it comes to public stuff and the limelight. Like. I, I kind of stray away from it, and she's kind of totally fine uh, staying away from it. So we were like, let's milk this thing as long as we can without telling anybody, uh, just family and friends. And then, I mean, kind of when we have to tell, we'll tell. And uh, she's starting to show pretty good. So um, we were on the same page there, and it went really well. And it's been a very heartwarming week, I would say, just all the texts and people reaching out. Uh, It's been very, very sweet. How did you guys find out it was going to be a boy? Did you do any sort of re- like gender reveal cake or light a forest on fire blue or anything like that? No, we didn't do any of that. Uh, we both wanted to wait till our 20-week ultrasound and just kind of have a little bit of suspense. So um, we both found out in the room. and I was, I was 100% it was going to be a girl. Like I'm the only boy on both sides of my family. Gabi's uh, one of two sisters. I just... Knew it was going to be a boy, and, and my uncles were going to tell me, well, it doesn't matter if you're on 10 or 11. you got to keep trying because you're the last McCreary. But, uh, yeah, right out of the gate with the boy. It would be crazy. When it comes to picking a name, I'm not going to ask you what you guys are talking about. I think that's a, a private thing you'll share when you're ready. But who has uh, – are you guys pretty much on the same page? Who kind of has uh, taken the lead in picking the name? Yeah, I think we just go off of each other. And uh, she'll throw a name out. I'll throw a name out. Uh, 
And it just kind of comes out randomly, too. Like, I don't think we've sat down and, like, gone over a list or really tried to uh, hammer down a name. Uh, and we're not – we haven't picked one out yet. But it'll just be, like, over dinner, and we'll be eating chips and salsa. And all of a sudden, it's like, what about this name? What about salsa? Like, oh, wow. Oh, Very good. Yeah. <laughs> or chip. Yeah, salsa. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys get to yep, veto yeah. if someone goes veto? It never gets brought up again? Um, a veto? Yeah. Uh, I don't think anything's been vetoed yet, but there's definitely just been the ones where oh, I, don't, I don't like that one or I don't like this one. But we're pretty on the same page of things, so uh, I think we'll land on something good. Well, very excited for you, man. Uh, Scotty McCreary is on. I got two other questions, very personal, selfish questions here. Uh, number one is you went on Celebrity Family Feud a few years ago, and, and I got invited on, and I went, and uh, we were humiliated. We lost. But you won on Celebrity <laughs> Family Feud. So first of all, congratulations. But who did you Thank play you so against? Uh, Chris Kattan, Saturday Night Live. Was it close? Uh, and he did a bunch of other stuff, too. Uh, yeah. did you, was it a close victory? kind of had that head bobbing. Sorry. Was it a close victory or uh, whoop them or what? Because we, um, we never got to go. and We never won a single category. Oh, really? No, I mean, I think... I think we kicked butt. If I if I remember correctly, like we were on, and my grandma, she was there, Paquita, and and she did great, and uh, yeah, Steve Harvey was cool. I mean, it was a great experience. It was kind of like a bucket list thing. And now every time we watch it on TV, it comes on like after the Today Show. I think we watch it every morning. We kind of always reminisce. I'm like, oh, remember that? That was pretty cool. Yeah, we hate ours. We hate when they show <laughs> ours again because uh, Amy tried to fight Steve Harvey at one point. It was yeah. a whole situation. Oh, it's, gosh. Yeah. Wait, he, he cheated me, sort of. No, he mm. played by the rules. He's you just game. didn't know the rules. Yeah. Well, yeah, I yeah. felt like he could have made an exception. Mm. No, no, no. It's a rule. <laughs> so, uh, wow. final question, Scotty McCurry, while we have you here. Do you have a no-touching policy in pictures? <laughs> um, I don't think so. I mean, I, I give him plenty of hugs and stuff. Uh, I'm a big I, because I don't I, listen. I try not to touch people in pictures, um, so I, I keep my hands to my side for the most part. Um, I guess Amy, you took a picture with him. Well, yeah, when we were at iHeart Country after our interview, we took a picture and we had a stand by side, side by side, and we put our arms around each other. But your arm stayed five inches from my back, like you were hovering uh, it in the air to be. I think I've always kind of done that just. As a respect thing, just yeah. meet and greets and stuff, especially with ladies. I, I, I think I've always kind of done that. But as far as no touching, like I've given hugs and stuff and pictures and things. I act like I'm on a roller coaster in pictures. I hold my hands in the air. I'm like, <laughs> ah! Because I, I never want anybody to say I was doing anything fishy. So, oh, listen, Scotty, congratulations, man. You have a, another monster song. It's really cool to see, mm -hmm. you know, all of your success. And, you know, I always love when a, when a good guy keeps winning. So, super proud for you. Scotty's going to be out on the road. Uh, I mean, he's got a lot of shows. You can go over to his website, scottymccurry.com. Uh, shows all the way until December 9th. So, and here's what I know. Cribs ain't cheap. You know what I mean? So, go to a show. Buy some, <laughs> buy some merch. Help the guy get him a crib, you know? So there we go. he's on the road. Um, that's awesome. Well, good to talk to you, my friend, and congratulations, and we'll talk to you soon. Hey, appreciate it. Good chatting with y'all. We'll see you soon. All right, see you, Scotty. It's a Bobby Bones show.